Given that the Prime Minister's party received over a million dollars in donations in 2005 from the insurance industry, how much in donations would it take for him to undertake a Soviet-style renationalisation of a large telecommunications company? Right Honourable the Prime Minister. I have no responsibility for donations. No, I agree. No. Point of order, Mr. Point of order, a point of order. Mr. Speaker, Speaker I Hall. seek leave to table this rather charming DVD called The Hollow Men, which features the Prime Minister That's and a... backgrounds his receipt of a million dollars in donations I understand. from the insurance oh, no, industry. Order. Order. See the I, leave order. To table? I understand that the DVD is in the public arena. No, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Oh, Speaker, oh. I'm not sure that it's very freely available. Perhaps members opposite could raise their hands if they've already Order. received a copy. <laughs> and we would be happy to supply it, them. The, 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 the DVD is in the public arena. Does the member have another supplementary? Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order. Look, order. There's just too much clatter going on during points of order. There will be silence while there are points of order. Uh, Speaker, I seek leave to table the hard copy of The Hollow Men, which in more detail points out the million dollars of donations that the Prime Minister's party received from the insurance industry. That book is also in the public arena. Does the member have uh, a yes, supplementary, supplementary question? question, Mr Speaker? Mr Speaker, uh, isn't it true that the Prime Minister called Kiwi Bank a failing institution after almost a million Kiwis signed up as customers? And therefore, why couldn't Kiwi Assure also provide a locally owned competitive and high quality option in the insurance market. Right honourable the Speaker, Prime Minister. It's great it's taking the question forward but we'll get to the heart of it. These are the reasons Mr Speaker. For a start off let's just take Kiwi Bank. Yes it's a it's a good little business I might add point out that though it's taken 860 million dollars of taxpayers money and it's never paid a dividend in over 10 years. Secondly the insurance market the insurance market's hardly a free ride because insurance companies happen to be in the process of paying $20 billion out in Christchurch. So if we had Kiwi Assure, as the member wants to talk about, then New Zealand taxpayers would be paying a fortune into Christchurch. Thirdly, uh, it's a competitive market at the moment, so one assumes if they're just going to lay off their risk, they'll be laying it off with the same reinsurers. Fourthly, Mr Speaker, if you look, I haven't finished, I haven't finished the round. A point I of order. We've got a few point, more points no, to go. The member no, must yield to a point of order. Waste of time. Prime Minister must yield to a point of order. What a waste of time. I will rule whether the point of order is in order. Mr Speaker, Honourable David Cousins. standing orders provide that Minister's answers should be brief and to the point and germane to the question. Order, order. order. The Prime Minister's doing order. a long, rambling I'm on my speech, feet. Mr Speaker. I'm on my feet. I think the uh, Prime Minister was doing his best to answer what was quite an, an expensive supplementary. Right on, Mr. Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, this is my fourth point of why an insurance company would be a bad idea. Name another New Zealand major or major bank that operates in New Zealand that has an insurance company. It wouldn't make sense to lend money, no, lend money and actually have the insurance on the same property they are renting. They don't do that, Mr. Speaker. To speak a supplementary to the Prime Minister. Oh. Given the fourth of his long answers there, is he aware that ASB Bank owns tower insurance? And if he's not, why is he asking such a stupid question? Yes. yes. Right on the Prime Mr. Minister. Speaker, yes, and they don't, they don't provide insurance in the form that we are talking about. Oh. I'm sorry, is that a point of order? A supplementary. Mr. Uh, right on Winston Peters. <laughs> A uh, supplementary question, Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, when the Prime Minister heard of Kiwi Shore over the weekend, did he liken it to that brilliant policy announced by New Zealand First on the 20th of October <laughs> called Kiwi Shore and did it put him in mind of the fam famous English adage, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery? <laughs> Right on all the Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, with the greatest respect to the member, it didn't get an any better idea when Labor announced it. <laughs> Supplementary, Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, given that the Prime Minister is now beaten up on Kiwi Bank, Kiwi Saver, Kiwi Rail and now Kiwi Assure, when these policies have all been very popular with New Zealanders, why is his government so out of touch and why does he persist in being such a Kiwi spoiler? Right on all the Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, we can go through them if you like, but as we pointed out with Kiwi Bank, uh, it's got $860 billion, million of taxpayers' money and has not paid a dividend. Kiwi Rail, well that's very interesting, but if we want to go through the details of that, the Labor government, as part of an election policy, decided to waste hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money 
paying toll a huge amount of money. This is the same Labor Party that went into the election campaign in 2008 promising to underwrite deposits, Mr Speaker, which cost this government a billion dollars. There is one part I'm prepared to accept this bit. I'm prepared to accept this bit. There is one gap in the market for insurance that Kiwi Assure could provide. OK, I will accept that, and that's income continuity. Because, Mr Speaker, if you're about to lose your job because there's no place welcome for you in the Labor Party, like Trevor Mallard and Phil Goff, you'd Order. need income continuity. Order. Order.